Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue, and we are continuing this series with transparent materials. This one covers dispersion. Dispersion. Sounds fancy. It is kind of fancy, so let's take a look. Dispersion is a sort of subtle effect, but it creates a lot of realism if you have the render time for it. Essentially, different wavelengths of light refract differently. So wavelengths or shorter wavelengths like violet refract a little bit differently than uh, really long wavelengths like uh, red. And so you get this sort of rainbow effect as the wavelengths are refracting at uh, different amounts through the material. So uh, Moto has dispersion right here and the material trans right here with all the other channels that affect these transparent surfaces. And it has some presets in here. So silica glass a 0.01. I'm actually going to bump that up to 0.1. So multiply by 10. Dispersion is a really subtle effect and these are fairly low resolution renders. So I'm gonna bump this up just so it's noticeable. And then I'll do a little time lapse render so we can see the difference between dispersion and no dispersion. And then we'll see if dispersion translates automatically to both uh, V-Ray and Octane. And if not, how do we recreate dispersion within those specific V-Ray and Octane materials? Okay, so let's get a look at dispersion in Moto. Okay, time lapse is over. There's our dragon in Moto with dispersion rendered in there. And you can see that sort of rainbow effect as the different uh, wavelengths are refracted slightly differently. So let's take a look at a little bit larger image. These are 600 by 600, each of these previews, so I could fit it on a 1080 screen. But I did render a 900 by 900 image using the progressive render in Moto. One of the things I really like about Moto's preview, among many things I like about Moto's preview, is I can open as many as I want and put them to set to different render passes or different channels or different uh, quality levels, all kinds of stuff. It's a super flexible preview system. One of the best things about it is the quality slider here, which deals with what's called convergence. And then we'll talk about that um, maybe in another video. But it, think of it as a quality slider, essentially. And so I'm not dealing with subdivs or rays or samples. It's just one single quality slider. And Moto's progressive renderer, while you're using CPUs, they're not as fast as GPUs. That race is over, GPUs won. Uh, you can get fantastic quality. It is butter smooth depth of field and really nice uh, fine refractions here and fine uh, dispersion, uh, dispersion effects in there. It's really nice. You can see how dispersion really adds to the realism of a glass material. It also adds to the render time of a glass material. So if each ray refracting through there has to be divided up by wavelength to get that effect, you know, think about it if you're doing blurry or uh, rough refractions and each, you know, refractive ray has to be, you know, broken down into multiple rays to get that sort of uh, uh, rough effect. So, you know, if you mix roughness with dispersion, you're looking at pretty killer render times. And of course, the other thing that deals with render time is um, depth. And we'll talk about that again in a minute with Octane. So moving on, let's see if V-Ray can handle dispersion. Well, we know V-Ray can handle dispersion because it has a dispersion channel in its material. But the question is, will V-Ray notice that Moto has this, whoops, I changed that back to zero, 0 0.1 dispersion in that channel, which gave us this effect. So we'll pick that up when we render in V-Ray doing the V-Ray automatic translation. Okay, let's find out. Loading up the geometry into the V-Ray, firing up the GPUs. And again, I always count this sort of preload time into, as actual render time. It counts, it has to do it. Um, okay, so here it's coming along. Looks interesting, looks kind of like dispersion and it's night, it's gone. So, hmm, I don't see anything. It doesn't appear to me that V-Ray picks up dispersion. Now maybe I have the value so low that V-Ray is not showing, or maybe there's some sort of channel, the dispersion channel in V-Ray just doesn't translate to the Moto channel. You know, dispersion of 0.1, I'm not really sure what that is. 0.1 what? <laughs> not really sure what that value is supposed to be. It's just 0.1, it doesn't really tell me. So we're gonna have to recreate that effect in V-Ray's material. I'm gonna do that in a second. Let's take a look at Octane first. And so move these off. Let's take a peek at Octane. Stop V-Ray so I don't spoil my computer. And let's see Octane. Boom. So Octane does notice that there's a dispersion channel activated in Moto and it does its internal translation and does uh, what it thinks is the equivalent of dispersion in the Octane specular material, which we'll take a look at in one second here. So 
there's dispersion in octane and because this is GPU and it's octane, it just really fires. I mean, that's just a few seconds and there it is. Also keep in mind that we had knocked down octane's um, depth to just eight, it's specular depth. And remember octane defaults to 24 and I've had some projects where I bump that up to like 70 or something just to when I have some transparent surfaces really close to each other. So let's bump this back up to 24 and see what happens to the look here. It's, I bet it's going to be dramatically different. And it is. So much wider. Uh, you're getting, with all these uh, refraction uh, bounces in there, you're getting much more of the area lights in the environment showing up in refractions, uh, washing out some of the dispersive effect. You don't have that yellow sort of tint to it. You know, whether or not that's a better looking image is going to be up to you. It's going to render more slowly than, of course, just one third of the specular depth in terms of bounces. So, again, I keep bringing up specular depth, even though it's not on the material, because it greatly affects the image and the time it takes to render. So you always have to keep that in mind, both with uh, not just Octane, but, but Moto and V-Ray as well. All right, there's Octane. So let's do a quick conversion of this material so we can see what Octane is doing. There's my glass. And, of course, all I do is add a... Um, custom material octane override that's going to convert this glass material into a bunch of octane nodes and put it in an assembly i can edit that in a schematic so bring up my schematic here and let's see what it did so here's my we've already been through this my emissive uh, transmissive color is of course the white but what did it do with dispersion so let's look at our channels here in octane we have something called dispersion coefficient and it's 0.1, so it kept it the same as Moto, even though I think the effect might be a little more dramatic in Octane than it is in Moto, not might be, it definitely is, but it kept it at 0.1. So this is something where, again, those values don't translate one to one. Let me fire up Octane here and, and change this around a little bit, maybe turn dispersion to uh, 0.03 and see if it's, that's a little more subtle. And eh, indeed it is. In fact, it looks like it's getting a bit of a more bluish cast than a yellowish cast. The dispersion coefficient, whoop, where are we here? Dispersion coefficient is really based on uh, an algorithm that I don't, or an equation that I don't particularly understand. It's by a guy named Kashi. I do know this, that if I bump up the dispersion coefficient, it's going to be more of that sort of rainbow effect. So here it is at 0.03. Let me pause and do a render region. Da, 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 da. And let's bump this up to 0.6, so 30 times or 20 times or so the amount, and hit go. You can see the effect is much more pronounced. Now, whether or not you like that, that's almost a, it's kind of a cool effect, actually, almost like a ooh, mother of pearl y type effect or something. But anyway, that's how dispersion coefficient is working in both Octane and Moto. So let's see if we can do it in V Ray. All right, let's take a look at V-Ray's material, see if we can get that dispersion effect going on there. So I'm going to add a V-Ray material, V-Ray materials, V-Ray material. And let's all put this on the top here and fire up the GPU renderer. And let's all do this together. We're all experts at this now because we did glass earlier. What is the first thing we do when making glass? We make diffuse color what? Black, Greg. Yes, black. Thank you. Okay, good job, class. Diffuse roughness, we're not dealing with that. BRDF type, we can stick with blend. Reflection color, well, white, just like we had in Moto. Very good. Reflection glossiness, we'll keep that at one. Very sharp reflections. Uh, refraction, index of refraction, 1.52. Refraction color, also white. Looking pretty good. Trace depth, let's make sure we bump that up to eight, like it is in Moto. And there we have our glass material. So let's add some dispersion in here to see if we can, I can move this out of the way, see if we can equal this motor renderer over here and this um, octane renderer. So I'm gonna turn enable dispersion on. There's no actual values under here, but when I turn it on, you'll see that it gives me a value called aberration at a value of 50. Now remember in Moto and octane, we're dealing with values like 0.03 and 0.1 and you know, 0 .1, 0 0.01. So, here it's a value of 50, so it's using a different scale here. And I don't even see this happening here with the value of 50. So let's bump this up to like something like 200, see what happens. 200, it looks like 150 is the highest. And it's going, it's going. And what do we got? What we have is nothing. So 
you sometimes encounter this in V-Ray. Now, this is my guess. Now, I'm sorry to run this experiment by you live on your precious YouTube time. My guess is that the V-Ray GPU renderer will not do dispersion. That's my guess. I'm going to try the V-Ray CPU renderer right now. So I'm going to stop this. And I'm going to fire up the V-Ray CPU renderer and see if we get a dispersive effect. And voila, we do. So this is the type of thing you run into in V-Ray more often than I like. You bump into features that don't work with the GPU. Yet, uh, Chaos Group has been very aggressive about upgrading these features to work with the GPU. And here you can see it's not, I don't see a lot of it actually in there. Um, but clearly dispersion is, aberration is not working with GPU right now. Let's turn this down to like back to the default of 50, see what happens. And of course, now that I'm dealing with a CPU, even if I have 16 cores, it's still not going to be fast as the GPU or the two, G two GPUs that are in here, but that's all right. Okay, so there's the dispersive effect in V-Ray. It looks very cool. Also, keep in mind, if you have caustics, uh, caustic reflections, or I guess caustic refractions going on to the floor, maybe a very bright light source close to this ca casting caustics, those caustics will be influenced by dispersion. So if you have dispersion active, those caustics will include that sort of rainbow effect instead of simply being white or whatever uh, color tint the glass is. Okay, so um, pretty subtle effect in V-Ray, if you ask me, especially con uh, compared to Octane and, and Moto, but it's there and it's only in G CPU, as far as I can tell. I can try one more thing. I'm going to pause this or stop that I'm going to turn off the V-Ray material and the uh, Octane Override. And I'm going to see one more time if V-Ray CPU picks up this dispersion amount here that I have in the Moto material. My guess is probably not, but it might. The reason I, do, I didn't see it last time is because I was using the um, GPU. So firing up the CPU here. And yeah, it looks like V-Ray does indeed, similar to Octane, recognize that value in Modo. And in fact, I wonder it's much more pronounced than what I was doing earlier. So again, interesting. This is where I start wishing again that V-Ray would let me do what Octane does, and that is convert my Modo material into the equivalent V-Ray material so I could see what those values are because I just tried a value of 150 and 50, the default in, in V-Ray for dispersion, the aberration, and it was super subtle. But when I do the automatic translation, it's super pronounced. So I have no idea what they're putting in aberration there. Looks good though, looks better than it did before. <laughs> Let me try this one more time. I'm just gonna try really low value just to wrap my head around this and maybe it'll help you guys wrap your head around this. So again, I'm turning on the V-Ray material and I'm going to try a really low value, like point, we'll just do point 0.1, like it was a moto. Maybe it's, well, it doesn't let it go less than one. So maybe it rounds point 0.1 up to one, and that's what it gives us. We shall see. So again, I'm going to stop this. And I'm going to do a render region so we can compare. Is my render region. And let's see the difference between, I'm just going to move this, make it a little bigger, get that ball in there, kind of cut it in half and see what the difference is between the automatic conversion and this aberration of the lowest we can get of one. Fire it up. Starts doing the GPU renderer. I'm sorry, the CPU renderer, not the GPU renderer. And hmm, again, it's there, dispersion is there, but it's a very different effect than what we had with the automatic material conversion. So again, I'm not sure what V-Ray is doing with the automatic conversion to get this type of dispersion versus this type of dispersion. And you may never know unless they do that sort of material conversion I've been asking for. Okay, here's one last look at dispersion. This is Moto with a 0.1 dispersion that translated automatically with V-Ray RT CPU because GPU does not work with dispersion. Quite a more dramatic effect there in that automatic translation. And here it is translated automatically to Octane Again, a more intense dispersive effect than what Moto has. And so take a look at them. Dispersion, no dispersion. Dispersion. All right, let's move on to transparent color and absorption. 
Yum, yum!